thank you very much for coming today. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he's touched on uh, quite a few things, and we're, we're going to be touching more on it tonight. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going around, a lot of things going around in the different states throughout our country, and a lot of division going on. He kind of touched on that. Um, just remember that a house divided against itself will not stand. And with some of the things that's happening within our, our patriot groups, uh, we are here for a reason. You know, you're here, yeah, and, I, and I ask that you look around, look at your brothers and sisters here, because we are here because we were called to be here. Amen. Right? Absolutely. We were, we, the, the I know in the, in the leadership command, all the way down the state, all of us feel like we've been, we're answering a mission here. We're, we've been called. And, and we're handling this and we're approaching everything we do by putting God first. And we know through history, through our biblical history, that if we don't stand together and we don't put God first, we're going to be a house divided. Amen. We don't need that. We don't want that. So I want you to look around to the people that you're standing here, sitting here with right now. These are your brothers and sisters that are standing with you. And for those that aren't here that can't make it because things going on in the family, we understand that. But I want you to really pay attention to who's here right now. Because these are the people that's in your house. And this house will not be divided. And with that said, I want to bring up uh, Brian Lang, Life Truth Radio. You guys seem to have no idea. I just want to say uh, real quick also, and I'm going to let Brian run it because he's, okay, he's, he's got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so, yeah. so you know uh, we've, we've had the blessing and the fortune um, to uh, be on Brian's radio show um, Brian has really helped us boost the message from the Oath Keepers um, we, we've had to deal with a lot of things in the last few months the stronger we're getting the bigger we're getting more we're seeing look, the evil one at work, right? We see things happening, and it's and, and, and the amazing part is it's so evident. We if, when yeah, we when yeah. things happen, and I like to call them the little miracles because when you see these little divine things happen, people something happens, and then all of a sudden this great miracle that if you're not looking for it, you won't see it. But these amazing things are happening within an oath keepers, and, and we're trying to point these messages out. And one is how we all came together. And, and it's funny because, you know, Steve went on for a long time, and he's going to explain some of that probably here in a little bit. But, you know, he held this t together with Ryan and Sean and some other people before I even got here. And when we sit down, we have, we have long talks, don't we? I mean, we have some amazing talks, and we have some, you know, and it, I like to say it's its, its own in-house evangelizing. And the important part about it is, the more we talk to each other, and I know Dave, you know, I've got a great brother here, Dave. He's, he's really come a long way with me and my family. And this leadership, as we've been as we've been growing, it's amazing how when we hear the stories and we see, see the similarities, how much we're so much alike and how much we all have this same feeling of the same calling at the same time. And it's amazing, you know, and... It, you know, I, I can't, if you haven't lived the experience, I can't explain it any more than you just know. You know God's talking to you. We know that God has brought us together. And every time that we talk about a problem that comes up or something, we address it in a Christian manner. That alone has made us stronger. And it's made us stronger because we've been able to fight the evil that's been around us. And there's been a lot of things that's happened over the last few months. But with that said, you know, um, I want to I want to just turn this over to Brian Lang, who's been an extreme patriot for the uh, for our country for Oath Keepers. He's helped promote us, and and he's a believer in Christ and and uh, the Ohio Oath Keepers, right? I should, yeah, Ohio Oath Keepers. But uh, you know, Brian's been a, a great advocate for uh, for patriotism, and and he's been a driving factor behind a lot of the stuff that we've been trying to put forward. And I'm gonna just turn it right over to him, let him run with it. Thank you for inviting me, Sonny. I gotta adjust this. I got I'm not gonna hold it in my hands all the time. Alright. Um, who is 
just listening to my show. Really? Wow. You guys been telling some people, huh? Um, <laughs> thank you for having me, for one. I was, um, when you were talking about divine, that we're all put here, there's this certain time for a certain purpose, okay? I have been guided by God to do my broadcast for the last five years in everything that I do. From overpasses for America, standing up, speaking out, and getting involved. That's what all Americans need to do. Now, I'm not a public speaker. I've done uh, uh, what's called color commentating for the sports down there, ESPN, on and off for nine, ten years. But I never knew that I was going to be doing what I've been doing for the last five. As I see our nation being destroyed, as I see the ones that are in power absolutely destabilizing this country, okay? There is evil, like you have said, in the midst. We have been infiltrated. And it is up to us that is right here today and our friends, our family, everybody out there to stand up, speak out, and get involved. Let me uh, hear uh, Marine sound off. Army. <laughs> Sorry, Marines. Navy. <laughs> Air Force. Hooray! <laughs> Ghost Guard. Bottom line, we all are brothers and sisters. We all took that oath. Amen. We all have a duty. We were put on this face of this earth to do what we need to do for the righteousness of this nation. Our founding fathers, raise your hand if you have a founding father spirit. Huh? You believe in God. Absolutely. You believe in country. Absolutely. You believe in family. You believe in the way that this country was founded. <clears throat> By the way, what I was saying, Obama, we are a Christian nation. Amen. And we will always be a Christian nation. Amen. That's up to everybody here to make that loud and clear wherever you are. Amen. If it's out in the overpasses, if it's at a cafeteria, it don't matter. You ask people what they know about what's happening in this country. Believe me, they will start listening. They will start asking you questions. Am I speaking too loud? Oh. I feel like it's losing me occasionally, sort of like on my broadcast. Um, but bottom line, they will start asking you questions. I get out on the overpasses. I've been out on the overpasses for three years. I got signs up there about Obama, about Hillary, about, well, let's see if anybody knows besides the panel here, because they have been on my broadcast several times. And Sonny, this is what I was getting to at the beginning. This is how my broadcast goes back and forth, okay? I was honored, to say the least. I'm in my truck. Sonny's telling me about the broadcast, or was it Fred the one time? Fred Schneider, he's a national admin for overpasses for America. Last year I pulled up in my truck and he's on the phone. And he asked me to be an MC for their Illinois Liberty TEA Fest. It's a Tea Party deal. And I put my head to the ground. I prayed. Because I've never been I've never thought in my wildest dreams that I've had a voice. Okay? But God has guided me here. I've got to take the reins, and I've got to go with what God tells me to do. Amen. You know? And I prayed, and I said I'd be honored. Does anybody know who Chris Ann Hall is? Oh, yeah, I know her name. Okay. She was a keynote speaker there. Does anybody know who Charles Strange is? Oh, boy. 
now I know why you brought me. No, and I, I do appreciate it. I'm sure there's some other reasons, but wow. I only seen three hands out here. I know these guys know. And the, of the three hands out here that I seen, some are the people that I brought. And thank you for coming. My aunt, who's in the middle, I love you dearly. Sheila, my good friend, Josh, and his wife, Jessica, who has created my promos for the show just recently. Fantastic job. But, wow. Do you, oh, man, this is going to really hit you guys hard. Okay, who knows what Benghazi is? Wow, look at how many hands there are. Do you know why you know what Benghazi is? Huh? Go ahead. Benghazi was started, created by Obama and Hillary. It was another fast and furious arms tour that going bad. And the day, two days after Benghazi, we had some people, some high-ranking people there. We, we, everything that we said then has come out now. But it was, it was, Stevens was a throwaway. They could not afford to bring him back because he could, they did not want him speaking before that sentence of committee. So they told him to stand down and throw away. They let our people die. Yep. Yep. Your brothers, your sisters, whoever it might have been in that line of fire, they let them die. Deserted. They were told to stand down. Yep. Now who rose their hand for I know you guys, don't raise your hand again. <laughs> Who knows Charles Strange again? Who were the heads? One, two, three, four, three of the people that came with me. Can you tell me? Can you tell everybody here? Charles Strange, the father of the Navy SEAL, soldier that got killed in the travel that was shot down. Amen. Are you mad? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God bless you, brother. Matt showed up on my show one night, and I was glad to hear that another patriot, another brother, knows about extortion 17. You heard about the helicopter with our Navy SEALs that was shot down in Afghanistan. Yep. More, more, right? Extortion 17 is bigger and broader than Benghazi before Benghazi. 22 of our brave Navy SEALs were assassinated in the Tangine Valley. You know how I know? Charles Strange himself. I was over to his house for his son's memorial, I think it was two years ago. I went into his house. I talked to him personally. He's been on my show several, several times. He's a brother of mine. And like I say to all of you, and you can bet your bottom dollar, if we're next to each other and something happens, I got your back. Amen. I tell that to Charles Strange, and everybody in here should have Charles Strange's back as well. Do you not have the families of those that fell in Benghazi? Huh? Yeah. Do you not have the four that died in Benghazi? Do you not have their family on your back? Yes, yes. sir. Yeah. Do you not want them to know, have the world know about Benghazi? Yeah. Sir. Then how much more will you take it for extortion 17? Huh? 22. Our government knew. They were told somebody in the Taliban was ordered that this was going to go down. Guess when they were told? May 9th of 2011. Just three weeks, I think it is, after they served uh, Osama bin Laden. Was he killed? No. Right. Three weeks. No, no. Not, I'm sorry, not three weeks. Osama, uh, Osama bin Laden was supposedly shot down or killed on May 1st, was he not? Eight days of documentation that Charles Strange has. See, this is what happened with Charles Strange. As all the 22 brave souls were brought home on the tarmac with the American flag dressed over them, 
Obama goes up to him, Charles Strange that is, leans down to him, whispers in his ear, we're going to look into this very, very, very deep. Sorry, folks. Have you heard about it? You didn't know of the words extortion 17, right? Right. Until possibly now. But you knew about the helicopter, did you not? That is what the media is doing to America. They don't want you to know. Lion media. Because if you did know, like you're finding out right now, you should be pissed off like I have been for a while now, just over extortion 17. I'm telling you. Do your own research. Find out and pass the word. You go up to somebody at a restaurant, the waiter, waitress, ask them what extortion 17 is. If they don't know, tell them a little bit. Guide them to YouTube. It's on there, but they don't want you to know. There's only been one hearing about extortion 17. Who heard about it? Who's seen it? Why didn't you see it? Cover up. Because it was on C-SPAN, not one, not two, but C-SPAN three. Charles Strange, he was, he was all stoked. He called me about a week and a half beforehand that the people that Shabbats, Jason Shabbats, told him that he was going to be able to ask questions. That's all any of the Gold Star family members want, is their questions answered. All right? Charles was stoked. He gave me a call. He was, he was really stoked. I had him on broadcast. And then, the day that he was supposed to be on the broadcast, the very next week or something like that, I can't remember exactly, I'm just being honest. But he called me again. This time he was angry. Literally angry. Because... He was told that he wasn't allowed to ask any questions. He himself, the one, the major point of focus for Extortion 17, the main parent that is standing up for his child and the others that were killed, he's not allowed to ask questions. Then he gives me another call. Not one parent was going to be able to ask any questions. Do you know what this what happened? At when these brave souls were brought over here, with the flags draped over their coffins? You know what happened in the hangar? Well, they had the bomb over them. Yeah. Thank you. Percy them. Percy them. This government allowed a Muslim imam to damn our own to hell. Does that sit right for you guys? No. Huh? No. Hell. So why is it, and I'm not blaming you guys because that's the way the media is. That's why they don't want you to know. Right now, I'll bet you're getting pissed off. If you're not, there's something wrong with you being in this room right now. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So, it goes on. Michael Strange's birthday was just June 6th. He would have been 30 years old. 30 years old. Who's 30 in here? Right back there. Look at him. Look at him. Raise your hand again. Go ahead. Michael Strange right there. Michael Strange right there. 30 years old. One of our brothers and sisters. So why is it that we aren't out there demanding answers from our federal government? Why aren't all of America calling their representatives like I have? And senators asking them why this is happening, demanding them to get answers. Why? Huh? You weren't first. 
They didn't know. That's right. Because of the media, because of the people in Washington, D.C., as you said. They're, they're, it, we are living in a time of Babylon, is the way I look at it. And we have to be the light that shines. We have to be that, well, light for God that shines throughout the world, showing people what the truth is. Now, I'm just going to do a little shameless promo. That truth, life, truth, again, God has guided me throughout all this. I thought about live truth and then the logo way back in 2008. It was in my mind. I drew it up. I knew what the T-R-U-T-H stood for, but I didn't know I was going to have a radio broadcast. It stands for the reality underneath the honesty. For they say that they're being honest with you, but in reality, it's something completely different. In everything that they do in Washington, D.C., everything that they do in the media is all scripted. They want you to believe a certain thing. They want America to believe a certain thing. Like Hillary's done nothing wrong. Right? How many we were just <laughs> we were just coming up here tonight and we pulled up and dropped off at Finley on the way up. And we pulled behind a car that had Bernie 2016, right? That's because they have been dumbed down so badly. And like Pastor said, get your kids out of public schools. Amen. Common Core is destroying their minds and everything. Amen. They're taking their souls. But moving on, well, I'm glad that. I mean, you're right, guys. You're right. By the amount of people here that knew of Extortion 17, I hope to God that you leave here, go on to YouTube, finding out about Extortion 17, telling everybody you know. It is that important. We cannot let these people get away with these crimes. As you said, the treason and traitorous acts that are all over Washington, D.C. And let's say the media as well. We have to hold them accountable on everything. See, aren't we supposed to be under God holding one another accountable? Yeah. Accountable to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. We are brothers and sisters under Christ. We hold each other accountable. Shouldn't we do the same with the yeah. federal government? Yeah. Shouldn't we do the same with the media? Shouldn't we do the same if it's just somebody walking down the street being a... Oh, I almost uh, said something bad. With a Bernie Sanders. There you go. Feeling the burn. we got to set them straight. we got to set them straight under God. Now, how many people... And I know some people might know. Robert Lavoie Fakum. Ooh, a few more. A few more. Let me ask you, how is it and why is it that you know about Robert Lavoy Finnegan? Um, he's a uh, he's the one in uh, Oregon, right? The one in Oregon, right? Yeah. What about him? Shot by the governor. Murdered. 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 Assassinated. Assassinated. Yeah. Why? Hey man, where did I hear that? Assassinated. Have you been listening to the show? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been listening to the show? <laughs> no, I saw it. I saw the video. Right now, we're live. We were on the air. Yeah, I was going to get there. I'm still going to get there. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Now, see, I really didn't know of Robert Lavoy Finnegan and everything that he was doing for this nation and for you, because he was. I've done my research on him now. He was trying to tell all of us about the Constitution, about God, about our founding fathers. And he went from Arizona up to Oregon because they were doing a land grab. BLM. You guys heard of BLM? Yeah. Bureau of Land Management? Yeah. Not part of the federal government. Terrorist organization. Terrorist organization, exactly. Amen. 
They just proved that with Robert LeVoy Finnegan's assassination. But the bottom line, he went up there because the word got out that the um, uh, uh, Hammonds, right? Yes. The Hammonds were getting or put in jail. Not just once, but a second time. For having a control burn on their own land, which ranchers have done for years and years, and is, the Hammonds have had this ranch in their family forever. You know? And Robert LeVoy Finnegan, along with Ammon Bundy, anyone know of Ammon Bundy? A few of the same people. Ammon's been on my broadcast. Cliven Bundy has been on my broadcast. I wish I would have had Robert LeVoy Finnegan before what happened to him. He's a righteous man. He was a righteous man just like our founding fathers were, standing up for what's right, standing up for what's true, standing up for every one of you here in America. That's what he was doing. And same with Ammon Bundy, same with Clive and Bundy, same with Ryan Bundy, and all these people, not Robert LaVoy Finnegan, because you all know, you're aware that he's been assassinated. Now, who all seen the video of Robert LaVoy Finnegan? Okay? Of the assassination itself. Of the assassination itself. Hired gunman. Create an assassination. What do you call that again? An L. What? It's an L shaped assassination, right? What do you call it? It was an ambush. Well, it was an ambush, yeah, but. Bottom line, he was going to a negotiation, people. He was going to a negotiation with the Bundys. Ammon Bundy was behind him in another vehicle. They started shooting on Robert LaVoy Finnegan's truck. So he took off. You know, he took off. He'd come around a curve, and there they were awaiting. So he tried to get around him going into the snow, and the snowbank, boom, the truck stopped. And he got out as soon as he could to protect the lives of those in the vehicle. There was an 18-year-old girl in there. There's another woman in there. He did the righteous thing as a man of God would do. You see it even to his last breath, what he did. For not only the people in his vehicle, but for everybody here, everybody in this nation. Now, I walked up to people, like I said, waitresses and waiters and other people, Speedway, you name it. You ask them who Robert LeVoy Finnegan is, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know about Extortion 17. They don't know the cost that these brave men and women, let's say, because there was two females in that vehicle. I mean, I'm just talking about Extortion 17 and Robert LaVoy Finnegan, what happened there just right now. But the cost that has been laid down, you, everybody out here that has served, especially recently in Afghan and Iraq and Vietnam, has known some people that has bled for this country that has died for this country, that has been maimed for this country. Are we just going to let this go by? I ran into a veteran just recently at an event. He came back from Afghanistan. He wasn't on the front lines. He filled the vehicles with the fuel. It's all right. He's still a brother, right? I asked him about extortion 17. No. I asked him about Robert LaVoy Finnegan. No. Sorry, folks. That's not good enough. Everyone in this room has a duty under God to tell everybody out there about these circumstances, about Robert LaVoy Finnegan and our political prisoners that are out there in jail right now. That all they were doing, all they were doing was standing up, speaking out, and getting involved for the righteousness of this nation. 
what they did to them out there had made the First and Second Amendment a felony. Because that's all they were doing. That's all they were doing at the Bundy Ranch. That's all they were doing in Oregon. Expressing their First and Second Amendment. Is that good? Is that what we need here in America? How much more is it that we are going to take here in America before we stand up, speak out, and get involved? How much? I'm sorry, I'm fed up. I'm TO'd, and I'm going to do everything that I can, physically powerful, humanly powerful, under God, to take this country back. Amen. And I hope you all will too. God bless you all.